about entrepreneurs, executives, and managers who lead salespeople, how they kind of get stuck in what you you refer to as the sales leadership insanity loop. By the way, Mm -hmm. I love that. Um, (laughs) Would you mind kind of talking to us about that, um, explaining it to us, and really why is it so important? You know what I found in my years, not only being a former VP of sales, but also now for 20 years working with sales teams, is a lot of well-intended CEOs and sales managers are working on the wrong end of the sales performance Mm -hmm. issue. So let's start with, you know, hiring top salespeople. Now, rightfully so, they're going to be looking at what I call the hard skills. I often refer to this as a sales IQ. So do they have industry experience, number of years of selling experience? But when you sit down and talk to a CEO or VP of sales as to why this hire didn't work out, You never hear things like, well, you know, they weren't prospecting or hitting quota, which which is going to sound a little amazing for your audience today. You'll hear things like bad attitude, wasn't a good team player, bull in a china shop and didn't care. So it's often they're missing vetting for the soft skills, the very, very important skills that lead to retention in an organization. Uh, When you look at take a look at training and development. So myself included, I love training the hard skills, negotiation, prospecting, asking good questions. But when you really examine closer why salespeople aren't demonstrating the right selling behaviors, it usually goes back to lack of development of a soft Mm -hmm. skill, EQ Mm -hmm. skills. So that's the insanity loop. I was just going to say, so, you know, why is it so important to then get out of that loop? Well, if you like big headaches and big bruises, that'd be your first reason there. (laughs) Uh, But but I would particularly say in these tough business environments where everything's getting more uh, competitive, you have a lot of industries where there's the commoditization factor happening faster and quicker, you really don't have the luxury of being average. I don't think you've ever had the luxury of being Mm -hmm. average, but today's business environment is not kind to average salespeople, average sales organizations. Mm -hmm. So if my team is only equipped with 50% of the skills, they're probably not going to win 100% of the business that they could or should. So it's really giving them 100% of the uh, skills to be successful, not only in sales, but in life. Because happy life, happy salesperson, happy sales manager. Yeah, totally, totally. One of the things, um, one of the key points that really resonated with me, um, not just being a leader, but also being a mother, um, was when you talked about the cookie monster um, Mm -hmm. and delayed gratification. Um, And uh, Trisha and I were talking um, last week and I said, I really think we just need to get every single leader within our organization to read your book. Because for me, it even went beyond salespeople. I happen to believe that a lot of our employees, most of our employees, and probably within every organization, even though you might not be in a quote unquote sales role, you're really selling all the time. You're always selling something. And to really bring it back to the EQ side of things, I think could really resonate with a lot of folks, a lot of leaders who are struggling on that insanity loop um, and in turn have a healthier culture and just a healthier, more productive team when they're focusing on EQ more so. Yeah, you know, we've said this for years and we're kind of taking a phrase and coining it to sales, but we say it takes a sales village to win and retain business. Yeah. And so, yeah. you know, for many sales organizations and rightfully so, they're very focused on bringing in new business, right? Mm-hmm. But according to Peppers and Rogers, You know, if you have a client that doesn't feel like you understand them and know them, 60% will leave. And it's not due to price, which we love to blame it on price. So, (laughs) Right. right? And so often, you know, we bring it in the door and then who's taking care of your clients? The Mm -hmm. tech team, the customer service team. And if they haven't been trained in emotion management and empathy, Mm -hmm. then often they're not holding those good sales conversations that need to happen with the installation or service of your product or service. So it really does take a sales village. And I'll add one more note here, you know, with marketing, right? And so digital marketing, it's becoming a big game. Yeah. Yeah. If your marketing department, person, agency, whatever size you are, if they are not listening to phone calls uh, in the day when we could write along and those days will come back meeting with clients, how can they possibly write good, empathetic copy? So true. Yes. So, you know, the marketing department needs to have a set of KPIs as far as how many conversations did you listen to? Because mm-hmm. when you actually can hear what a prospect is actually saying, 
that's when you write good copy or develop better marketing messages. So yeah. it does take a sales village. I, I love that. We have a huge account management team here at Belay. It took us you know, years before we realized the value of um, A, account management and customer service really um, keeping the clients that we have as equally as important and way cheaper than constantly <laughs> going to find new clients. So, you know, having a win-win scenario where your sales team um, is thriving and has the right training and education and soft skills, and then your customer management team or your client success team, your product management teams also have the same thing because we believe in exactly what you're saying. I mean, we have to win over our clients every month to continue to want to be our clients. So mm -hmm. we need those teams to be as equally um, skilled in their emotional intelligence to handle it as well. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And yes. even our leaders too. We challenge our leaders mm -hmm. to talk to a client. Um, you, you can't just be in your leadership role and whether you're finance or like you said, marketing, um, you know, you could be in IT, you still need to understand our clients because we're all in this together. We're here mm -hmm. to serve our clients with excellence and continue to provide great service. And, yes, and you know what I'm hearing from a lot of my clients is that decision making is changing. Um, bigger offices, bigger titles are getting involved, right? Mm -hmm. And so if you don't have that type of mentality that it takes a sales village, you know, frankly, you're setting your seller up for failure because it's right. not that they don't respect the seller, but they're sitting there going, sometimes I want to know that your company cares enough that you bring in the big titles to the meeting. And, right. yeah. and so I think it's great that you're doing that because I'm hearing this from a lot of my clients and they've had to really do some quick pivots here to make it happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how do we get our, um, ourselves and our organizations off of this dangerous insanity loop? Well, the first thing I think you have to do in life, and it's going to sound so simple, make a decision. And, you know, and so I grew up in a very practical uh, Midwest upbringing. And so I'm like, either do it or quit complaining about it. I actually don't <laughs> care which decision you make. Yes, yes. That sounds yes. like a good training plan. You're speaking my love language. <laughs> <laughs> and so it really is making the decision that I believe it's important. And then just like anything else in life, you study it, right? This is how we yeah. all got good uh, at whatever our craft is. But then I think the second thing is, especially for sales leaders, if you're having a seller and you've got a sales performance challenge, whether it's prospecting, closing business, not asking enough questions, diagnose the right end of the problem. Do you actually need to teach more sales training skills because sales is a profession just like mm -hmm. anything else? Yeah. Or is the root cause lack of these soft skills? And I'll give you a quick example. Going back to your cookie monster. Yes. So <laughs> everybody, everyone has heard the cute phrase, God gave you two ears and one mouth for a reason. <laughs> Yes. Okay, that's yeah. new, right? Yeah. And then we teach our salespeople a questioning model. And yet the biggest complaint we'll hear from sales leaders, prospects, and customers is salespeople talk too much. Mm. So is it lack of knowledge, the IQ, or is it impulse control? Is right. it emotion management? Mm -hmm. I get nervous. I buy the buying signal. So it's usually mm -hmm. a combination of both, but mm -hmm. we miss the training on the EQ side impulse control, emotion management, self-awareness. Love that. So in your book, you provide 34 excellent interview questions mm -hmm. to help us kind of better select emotionally intelligent salespeople. So let's just take, if you wouldn't mind a minute and kind of talk through that. So what would you say is one practical thing? You know, we are the most practical business podcast. Yes. Um, that's what we in like to world. say. In, in the world. The world. <laughs> so if, if we want to drill it down into a practical level, what would you say is, is something we can do to improve our own emotional intelligence? And what's one thing we can do to help our sales teams develop mm -hmm. 
their EQ. This concept is not new. However, it's not practiced on a regular basis. And when you really study emotional intelligence, knowing your emotions, what you're thinking and feeling, the ability to tune into other people's emotions, not react Mm -hmm. to how they're showing up, Mm -hmm. it starts with emotional self-awareness, which is developed Mm -hmm. first and foremost by carving out quiet time each and every day. And I'm Mm. gonna suggest the morning before people grab their cell phones. I call it the adult binky now, right? We can't go anywhere without (laughs) it. And and we get up in the morning and we we, we check our emails and then we've got this, you know, even though the emails don't even have anything horrid in them, right? A problem. Our brain is racing, right? So now we've given our body a big shot of cortisol. It's just a mess, okay? So just carve out some quiet time. Mm -hmm. And for me, um, because I am a person that had to study emotional intelligence, I am the former bull in a china shop, okay? Ask anyone that's worked with me. (laughs) I might know does, a little bit about that, what you're does talking that about. Resonate I don't know. With you, it I don't with know. I saw your hand. Bit. It does. <laughs> I saw your hand raised. Always got, no one would ever lack, you know, point out lack of integrity, work ethic, but there had to be a different way to do it. So for me, when I'm sitting and reflecting, I'm going to be asking, hey, what trigger showed up yesterday that mm-hmm. possibly caused me to respond in a manner I regret? Mm -hmm. trigger Mm -hmm. response regret loop because stimuli is not going to change a challenging conversations challenging people Mm -hmm. those aren't going to change and we all know it's our reaction Mm -hmm. um you also have to have enough uh confidence to say was i the trigger so if i'm not being aware i can be sitting down and i'm going to have a really good coaching conversation with a salesperson but my face is intense i don't do any love before the meeting and this is a person that needs love so the advice is spectacular and no one can hear a word I'm saying because I triggered right. them emotionally with my intensity. So I think it's the self-reflection because then once you start tuning into what you're thinking or feeling, then you develop the mega, and I will tell you, it's the mega influence skill, and that is empathy. Because mm-hmm. I always tell my clients, how can you possibly influence someone if you don't know, care, or understand what they're thinking or feeling? Right. Mm-hmm. And yes. you can't. But think about it. Empathy is a thinking skill before it's a verbal skill. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if we're not thinking, we can't verbalize. And that's the piece we we somewhat miss in our ma- marshmallow instant gratification. Got to right, get after right. it now. Yeah. 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 So that that morning, let's say that that journaling and that quiet time, do you recommend, I mean, literally writing down how the previous day went or how you're feeling or what would that what would that 15 minute chunk of time in the morning or whatever look like? What I like to do immediately, and this is a little bit of the neuroscience, I think, of high performance um, sales life is I really do like to start with gratitude. Mm -hmm. And so this can sound, if people aren't familiar with how powerful this is, I'll give them the physiology. Literally, when you're grateful, your brain starts releasing the feel-good hormones of dopamine and serotonin, right? Mm -hmm. And so you literally feel better, which changes your emotional state. And so, and, and all of us are a little, can be a little wired to be with that survival brain, you know, fight or flight. And Mm -hmm. it certainly doesn't help with social media and all the bad news. So I always start with gratitude and then simply the reflection. So I think for people, it can be writing down. For me, it's thinking. Other times I simply read, um, books that aren't really business books in the morning. I tend to read those uh, later at night. What are books that are going to make me a better person and show up better? Mm -hmm. And I find that's what I write a lot of my blogs about. <laughs> That's what I bring into my that. training. Yeah. So there's a lot yeah. of other um, literature out there that can actually make you better mm-hmm. in your leadership role. And they may have nothing to do with business. Good oh, spiritual goodness. book. Good uh, yeah. uh, self-improvement no, book. No, no. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Totally. You know, it's interesting. Um, I think there's that. You talked about those sayings that aren't very original, right? But I think a lot of this comes back to if you do the same thing, the, the definition of insanity, right, is if you do the mm-hmm. same things and expect the same results, yes. um, that that is the definition. And I think so often people don't realize that they control 
what happens to them, right? And, and the outcome of it. And so then they want to blame it on everybody else. And why I resonate so much with EQ is because I'm a big believer in you can create your own destiny. You can create your own success. And so leveraging that quiet time, really getting to know yourself, really planning what you Mm -hmm. expect to happen, treating others like you wanted to be treated, right? Nobody wants to go into that meeting and have that very gruff leader looking at them. Nobody wants a leader who's not empathetic, right? So if you just take charge of that, and here's the thing, and this is embarrassing to say, right? But I feel like so many leaders and sales individuals miss that empathy part that if you walk in with it, you already have a leg up. Because they're, they're not used to seeing that and feeling that. So these are really good, good things that just make you a better human in addition to a better sales leader. Yes. And right. You don't, and and you, don't, you don't trade one. You're not trading empathy for right. drive, competitiveness, desire to achieve. So I think a lot of people think, well, if you're driven and sa- a salesperson and you're achieve and you want to hit quota, that you can't also have empathy and be kind and that those those different skills don't mesh or marry together. But with a lot of hard work, mm-hmm. like the former bull in a china shop, you actually mm. can be all those things. You can be driven and want to succeed and w- want to achieve a goal and be sales-oriented and also have great mm-hmm. empathy and emotional intelligence. And you bring up something that I get a lot of worry from. So it is, it's so interesting when you're teaching empathy, there'll be a hand that goes up and says, but we still got to hit our numbers. <laughs> I mean, it's literally like this because they don't want you to think, I'm a kind person. I'm good. And so I think it's it's never either or. You may need to have empathy and assertiveness. And the assertiveness is now stating the behavior change you need. But if I've made that connection, and if you study great negotiation skills, you will find in the really good negotiation books, they will talk about empathy. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't mean that you're not trying to get the best for your company, get right. the best for somebody right. else. So I, I think, you know, empathy and assertiveness, that's how you, if you need to have the crucial sales conversation, those are the two skills you bring into play, plus emotion management, so you mm-hmm. don't get triggered because mm-hmm. you are managing human beings. And sometimes when they feel that, you know, they may not have developed as much in their journey, so they're going to lob an excuse back. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we've sure. heard of them. I don't get enough training. I don't price points terrible. I have a lousy territory. And if you allow yourself to get emotionally triggered, then you can't mm-hmm. execute the right sales leadership skills. Right. And, uh, you know, so for me, I find myself fighting for the need to be right. I, I love yeah. the need to be right. So <laughs> <laughs> I've got to really watch that. Are, are you an Enneagram one by chance? I, you know what? I just read about the Enneagram and I'm looking to take it because it- Oh, uh, good. Yes, you have I, to share when you find it. out. <laughs> So I'm not let, sure. You know. Let us know. Let us know. Yeah, that that's the thing I'm plagued with is I need to be right. Mm-hmm. But I'm I'm an Enneagram one who um, I guess they call that the perfectionist. So that's why I threw that out there. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't be surprised. Yes. Yeah. Or maybe it was growing up in a large family and all you wanted to do was get the last word in. So maybe it's just a bad habit that I've taken mm-hmm. into my adulthood. <laughs> That's true. Well, as we've mentioned, a lot of these um, concepts and a lot of the things that you talk about in your book do relate to just not just sales leaders, but really leaders across an organization and really resonate to just being a a good human being, right? Having great relationships. Um, So is there anything, like Tricia said, we're the most practical business podcast. Are there some things that maybe we could leverage? Maybe there's some encouragement that you could share just as an organization on how to reach our organization goals. Much like sales goals, there Mm -hmm. are things within us as an organization that we have to reach. So is there anything um, related to EQ that could help us reach those goals? So I'm kind of hearing possibly two questions here. And maybe it's influencing the organization that these soft skills can indeed produce hard sales results. Mm -hmm. So if you're, so from a position of influence, let's say you're trying to, uh, persuade people that empathy really can make business happen. And so instead of telling, you'd simply ask questions such as, well, what was the conversation not happening? And people will look and they'll say, what do you mean? What was the Mm. elephant in the room that we didn't pick up on and therefore is the reason we didn't get a second meeting or we lost the opportunity? Mm -hmm. And so I think when you're starting to influence people, 
I, this is what I realized 10 years ago when we started working with this body of work. You had to be very good at linking it to hard sales results because, frankly, uh, people are at a point where, especially right now, where I'm seeing is we've got to hit the physiological needs, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? right. right. Economic yeah. security, physiological security, and that really never goes away. So as you're starting to bring this in, become very good at linking the cost of not mm-hmm. having EQ. Um, I see a lot of times when they're not having conversations with the right decision makers, C-suite, big office, big title. Yeah. Well, then we've got to say, well, is that lack of knowledge? We've, we've taught them all the org chart, user buyer, technical buyer, all those great terms. Or is it a belief system? I don't have the confidence. How many deals are we losing because of that? Mm. And so it's it's asking the provocative questions where they start going, Well, and and you can say, well, can they demonstrate the selling skills? And this is when I learned, really got convinced, they could actually demonstrate the skills in a role play. And yet when they got out in a real sales call, they weren't demonstrating those skills. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's lack of soft skills, assertiveness, impulse control, optimism, self-talk. And so that's what I would advise people to do. Start linking it with the conversation and questions. I love that. Yeah. When you say self-talk, you know, confidence even, right? Maybe confident role-playing with their small team, but then going out and doing it to a prospect is a different Well, you know, objection altogether. handling, right? Um, mm-hmm. I, I crack up when I teach objection handling because, first of all, we believe, bring them up. Why are you waiting for the prospect? <laughs> That's mm-hmm. yeah. right? and you, you know what all, they are. You know, and I've got the whiteboard here. You can fill a whole whiteboard with the objections. And then my next yeah. question is, okay, now what's your response to that objection? And everyone's looking at me like a deer in a headlight. And so I said, okay, first of all, what we should be shocked at is that you don't have a response prepared. And secondly, since you were able to whiteboard it, why not bring it up before they do? It's the Mm -hmm. elephant in the room. So it's just really, and then, so again, uh, I think a lot of uh, sales doesn't happen because salespeople have a limiting belief. Mm -hmm. It's not polite to talk about the elephant in the room, Mm -hmm. or I don't know where this conversation is going to go. And Mm -hmm. uh, so there's, that's a whole body of work Mm -hmm. there, but that's just one small example. So much goodness all all here today. And I could mm. keep on talking about EQ and I could keep talking with you, Colleen, because we have so much in common. So this has been absolutely fabulous. And I really do appreciate you just coming and parting your knowledge on us and helping um, our listeners out there gain some more knowledge on EQ and help for their sales leader. Mm. So thank you so much for joining us today. Trisha, Lisa, thank you for having me. I've enjoyed our thank conversation you, and I could have talked another hour as well. <laughs> yes. Thank <laughs> you so much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>